Our subframe connectors arrive to you 100% powder coated for great rust prevention. It's important to grind this powder coat off so the weld will stick. You can use a round file or flat file to accomplish this task. After you've ground off the powder coat, you're ready to place your subframe connector to the floor of the car. It might be necessary to remove the fuel lines. Next step is to place the subframe connector onto the rear leaf spring mount area. I'll take a scribe to mark the area because this will have to be ground off. Have to grind off the old undercoat, the old paint. The, it's important to do the best job possible here because then the weld will penetrate to the chassis. All right, when you're grinding away the old paint, the old undercoat, it's important to use a good aggressive disc to make sure we get down to bare metal and make sure all the rust is out of there as well because absolutely the best preparation will make sure that the weld has the best penetration. Need to be patient. Make sure that you get all the old stuff off the car because again, preparation is everything in this step. All right, the next step is to remove the subframe connector mount, take the bolt out, and also remove the mount uh, as well, the, the rubber bushing, because in our kit, you get supplied with brand new polyurethane bushings. It's best to use a long screwdriver or pry bar so you really get some leverage on the subframe. Next, it's time to install the new subframe bushing. The subframe has been pried down so you have space at the top between the floor and the subframe to get the multi-piece bushing in place. The bushing is in the subframe, but you leave the bolt out because then you're going to place our subframe connector on top of the subframe, putting the bolt with a big washer in, and then we will tighten that up to hold the subframe in place. With the subframe still loose, we slide our subframe connector onto the subframe, place the bolt in, make sure that the back of the subframe connector is up against the leaf spring mount, and we'll take our air gun or just a normal ratchet and snug down the bolt in the subframe connector. All right, now the fun begins. Let the sparks fly. We use the transmission jack to snug up our subframe connector to the rear leaf spring mount. One thing, make sure when you're doing this project that all four tires are on the ground, that the car is square. What's going to happen is once we weld this in, make sure that every, the chassis is as square as possible. Again, once it's welding in, welded in, that's where it will be. So, now it's welding time. But we take precautions just like you should. Wherever there's a fuel line, an oil line, or the gas tank nearby, we make sure that the weld cannot get, the sparks cannot get near that. We improvise as well using welding gloves to shield our fuel lines. First step is to put a few tack welds on, then look, make sure that the subframe connector is square in the chassis and so on, and also that uh, the, something is not burning. Then it's time, once you've done your tack welds, to go back, weld up the subframe connector completely. Now that's a nice welding. Everything's square. It looks good. Time to take some gloss black spray paint, touch up the areas of grinding and welding. Then replace the time to replace the fuel lines. Make sure everything is there. This is a good time to check the fuel lines to make sure there nothing has been crimped or there's not a, a cut in it and so on. If you have our rear sway bar, 
fuel line bolts right to the side of the sway bar mount. All right, the back is all set, looks good. Now we go to the front. Our subframe bolt is tight. Now it's time to mark the sides of the subframe connector where we will then drill out the subframe so that we can bolt in the front. Our subframe connectors are bolt in, so you can always take the subframe out of your car. We put extra bolts in the side for the utmost in chassis rigidity. Here we're using a unibit to enlarge the size of the hole. Now, of course, before you, you drill the second hole, make sure the bolt goes through and everything is square again, and then drill the rest of your holes. Once the small bolts are torqued in the front of your subframe connector, go back and double check that you've torqued the large subframe bolts. Give your car a general once over, and now you're ready to drive.